Here's a quick example of looking at the mass and center of mass of uh, a curve. Uh, you think of it as a wire with a certain density. And um, so this is a, one of the book problems. Uh, we're looking at the semicircle, x squared plus y squared equals 4, so radius is 2. x squared is equal to 0, so it's the right half of the semicircle. And we have constant density k. Well, the mass, that's easy. This is an example of one of our symmetric kind of integrals. It's always the integral over the curve of the linear density, which is usually called lambda, times ds. A little bit of arc length along the curve. Now, this could be hard. If lambda were variable, we would have to parameterize the curve, which we know how to do, cosines and sines, not too bad, um, and then have to integrate it. And luckily, because it's cosines and sines, we would have a parameterization, we know a parameterization of this that's constant speed. And so that wouldn't be too bad, um, depending on, of course, what lambda was. In this case, though, it's really quite easy because lambda is a constant k. And so we just get integral ds, but that's just the length of the curve. So it's exactly what you think it is. It's just the, the density times the length, which is going to be k times 1 half, since it's a semicircle times 2 pi r, which is 2. And so some of those 2's cancel, and so you just get 2 pi k. OK? So that's the mass. What about the center of mass? Well, first we have to calculate the integral and then divide it by the mass. So this is going to be uh, x bar. Let's put a bar over that thing. x bar is going to be 1 over m times the integral, it's the average over the curve of the um, x coordinate times the density. So that's going to be x lambda ds. And so this is a little bit different in feel. Here we had a variable lambda, if it were a variable, that's kind of intrinsic to the curve. It doesn't really have a meaning off the curve. But here we have something that's really coming from the curve itself, and then com something coming from the space it lives in, the x-coordinate. And so that's actually a, a kind of a subtle difference, but it doesn't really worry us. It's not going to make a big deal, a big difference operationally. OK, so that's going to be the integral Whoops. on this curve. Now, the lambda is just the constant k, and that's just going to cancel. That's not too surprising. That often happens. That always happens with constant density. Um, center of mass calculations. And um, we're just going to get x ds. Now, is this is the more complicated kind of integral. We don't have a constant. And so we're probably just going to have to parameterize this. Well, we know how to parameterize a circle. That's by x and y is going to be, let's see, radius, which is 2 cos t, 2 sine t. And so that's going to be r, that's vector r of t. Oops, not a 9. Put it in bold. You guys would put an arrow over it, of course. OK. And so we're need, going to need r prime of t. Let me just grab this, actually. The whole thing, put primes everywhere. And so that's going to be minus 2. That's going to turn into sine. And that's going to turn into cosine. Uh, no, it does have a weird thing when you have a t there. OK, and we really just need, for a vector line integral, we knew the whole, the whole vector, but we really just need the speed. And that's going to be the magnitude of that guy. Control V. Uh, magnitude of that guy. And that's the sine squared plus cosine squared just cancels out. We just get 2. Speed 2. That's always equal to the radius for this kind of parameterization of a circle. OK, so that means we're pretty much ready to go. This guy is going to be, let's copy this down, but go ahead and cancel the k's, 1 over 2 pi. And so now we've got the integral. Oh, what's the limits? It's going to be from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. x is, we got to translate everything into t, so that's going to be 2 cosine t. And ds is just speed times dt, and so that's just going to be times 2 dt. Yeah, a little space there, it makes it look nicer. And we can even simplify that a little bit. We could have observed this at the start, that the x 
uh, coordinate. This is totally symmetric around the y around the, around the x-axis, and so we can just double it. Okay, so double that, get a factor of one over pi, and then bring those those twos out, get a four, and then just go from zero to pi over two. It's not a huge simplification, but it's nice. Okay, and that's pretty easy to do. That's four over pi, and that's just sine t from zero <coughs> to pi over two. Whoops, did something weird there. I didn't mean print. Just kidding. And that's just four over pi. Okay. Now that's only half the story, of course. That's just x bar. I'll just copy that down. Okay. What about y bar? Now that's, of course, much easier. Copy it one more time. Turn it into a y. By symmetry, that's going to be zero. That this was an example going from here to here was an example of using an even symmetry, which simplifies things a little bit and gives factor of two. But what I've seen a lot of folks doing is doing that just everywhere where there's a symmetry. Lots of times it's an odd symmetry, and that's much more powerful. It gives it zero. And so you're, you're done. You don't have to multiply by two and then continue with the integral. It's just plain equal to zero. So the coordinates of the center of mass are 4 over pi, comma, zero.